All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be doing one of my favorite models. This is the 118 scale, Japanese Zero by Elite Force. I already reviewed the green version of this model. This is supposed to be the Pearl Harbor edition, so I'm super excited to get it open. But one of the reasons it's my favorite is just based on the details of the cockpit, because the cockpit actually gets installed separately. It's not already in there. You can kind of see it right there. And the pilot is super detailed as well. At the end of the video, I'll be comparing this one to the green version, so make sure you watch the whole video as well. All right, and for those of you that like to see it in the packaging, here it is up close. You can see the cockpit right there. The pilot's displayed nicely. You can see him holding this sword as well as a pistol, which I will show up close later. And the pilot looks really good too. They, this is probably one of my favorite pilots that they did as far as models go. And then right here is the green one I'm gonna be comparing this one to. So it's pretty standard packaging for Elite Force models. Most of the actual packaging is really skinny, probably to fit on store shelves, but it did, let me see here, also come with instructions here, which I'll show you on a little bit, and uh, pretty simple packaging. There's some wire ties holding everything together. I'm gonna get those off and I'll get back. All right, so here's everything that came in the box. It also came with these instructions here, which are pretty basic instructions, just some black and white photos showing you the contents of the box, how to install the cockpit, and also the wing assembly. All right, so we'll start with the cockpit. Probably my favorite thing about this model is I just love all the details they put into it. As you guys know, I love details. <laughs> you can see here in the cockpit, gauges themselves are etched or painted, and all the dials are there. Um, the charging handles are on there for the guns. Also, the stick. You have They even painted the seat belt and look like it drapes over the seat itself. So really, really impressed, especially for a model that you won't even see all this stuff once it's put in there. It's a pre-built model. You'll see the gun uh, tips come out the front of the plane, but you won't see like, for example, I think these are oxygen tanks. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, um, but I believe they're oxygen tanks. You won't even see this. Once it's installed, it'll be hidden. So really impressed with these details. All right, so one of the questions I get the most in the comments is where I purchase my models or where you can buy them. And unfortunately, most of them are discontinued. The manufacturers aren't making 118 scale anymore. So I usually find my models on eBay. And if not, I'll go to a local marketplace. Uh, maybe it'll be somebody I meet through a Facebook group or something like that. So just wanted to go ahead and throw that out there because I get that question asked all the time. But if you're gonna buy online, make sure your information's safe, which brings me to the sponsor of this video, Incogni. Every day, your information is being sold online without you knowing it. If you've ever put your information online in a survey or via an inquiry, or if you've received one of those data breach emails from one of the big companies, which I'm pretty sure we all have, <laughs> there's a good chance your information is being stored somewhere. There are thousands of data brokers selling your personal information to unknown businesses to be used however they want every single day. The good news is you can actually ask these data brokers to remove and delete your information, protecting your privacy. However, if you were to do that one by one, it could literally take years. They'll reach out to the data brokers on your behalf, request the data removal, fight any objections. Best of all, it's all automated. All you have to do is create an account to let Incogni know what information they will be requesting to be removed. Then grant them the right to work for you and reach out to the data brokers on your behalf. Incogni will do all the work for you. And I really like that they'll keep you updated as your information is being removed. It only took me like two minutes to sign up and Incogni started right away. You can easily go to Incogni on your smartphone or web browser to see what requests have been sent, what's in progress, and what's been completed. You can also see a detailed view to see more details on the company, the severity, and also the status. It's super affordable, simple, and also comes directly from our friends at Surfshark. The first 100 people to use code military at the link below will get 20% off Incogni. If you don't want to do all the work yourself or have time, like me, let Incogni do it. Click the link below to secure your privacy. Next, I'll show you the pilot. And like I said in the beginning of my video, this is one of my favorite pilot models. Just the details on the face itself and the paint looks pretty realistic to me. I mean, they even put the goggles up here uh, with the helmet. And then they put his sword attached to him. You can obviously take this off. There we go. You have a sword, which it doesn't come out of the holster. I still think that's pretty cool that they included that, as well as this little pistol. And a lot of you guys let me know in the comments on my last zero that I reviewed what this pistol or what y'all thought it was. Oh, and another thing real quick, the actual helmet and goggles do come off. Okay, and I wanted to show you real quick what it looks like with a pilot installed in the cockpit. I highly suggest if you want the pilot to be in the cockpit, you install it before you install the cockpit itself, just because it's a lot easier. But look at this, you can actually see the pilot's hand fits around the stick 
and the throttle itself, no problem. Like it's designed to fit that way. A lot of these models, you can't even put the pilot in the cockpit hardly. <laughs> Whether or not even get the hand around the stick, it won't even fit around the stick sometimes, or there's not even a throttle. But they did it really good with this model. And you can even see the feet laying on the rudder pedals themselves. So A plus for this one, guys. You could even leave it displayed like this if you wanted to without even putting the cockpit in the plane just because it looks so good. So the wings themselves are really easy to install, and I like this. They don't come with any screws. Some of the sets do, but what you do is you just, and of course I'll show you in a little bit, but you'll just pop it into the fuselage. But I wanted to show you all before I do that some more of the paint up close. And these are actually rubber, and I like that too because a lot of these models, when they have plastic pieces that are small like this, are prone to chip or break. So that rubber is going to make sure it doesn't break. And then the landing gear, the actual paint they did looks really well to me. Um, they even have, this is where some of the guns are here. You can see some of the weathering, it looks like, or some gunpowder from that. And I think this is like exhaust from the engine there. And there's the BBI logo, um, Elite Force, Blue Box Toys. So I like it. All right, so it also came with a drop tank, um, which I think looks really good. They even show some of the, those like rivets there as well. And then here are the rear stabilizers. And there's some writing. Let me know in the comments if you know what that means as well. And yeah, I'm pretty impressed with the paint job. Okay, so we're going to install the cockpit. And I highly suggest uh, pushing back the canopy or just removing it all together. You just pinch on the sides here. And these little tabs are the only thing holding it on to the fuselage. So you can just pinch it, remove it. And what you're going to do is flip it over. You'll see these two holes right here. It's kind of hard to see because of the lighting. But that's where the actual gun barrels are going to fit in. So you want to make sure... That that's how it goes. You're going to flip it over. There's also on the side of the fuselage these tabs, right? And they're going to want to line up with right here on the side of the actual cockpit itself. So make sure the gun barrels go under that. Try to slide them into the holes as you're pushing it down. All right, and I found per the instructions, you want to slide it in like this and then push it down. So make sure you slide it in, push it down like this. Make sure the barrels line up and there you go. All right, so the cockpit's installed and the pilot looks really good. You can actually see his eyes almost line up perfect with the gun sight right there. And then the back, this part right here is part of the cockpit, lines up really good with the headrest. And you can actually see, I think those oxygen bottles, whatever they are, right here through the fuselage. So maybe that's why they put them in there. If you wanted to look down there, you actually can see them. Um, and then the front where those holes were, you can see the gun barrels protruding that I was showing you just to make sure that you line those up right. And then next we just gotta put on the canopy. So squeeze that part in a little bit and it'll line up perfect. There's a top view. You can leave it like that. You can also of course slide it back if you want. Okay, so to install the wings, you just flip the fuselage over. And then on the back of the wings, you'll see these two tabs right here. You'll line them up with this. You'll kind of put them underneath. And then you wanna push them back a little bit. Be careful, cause this is still plastic and you're just gonna to wanna to snap it. This part has two tabs right here and right here as well. And the mold isn't perfect, as you can tell. Um, so just make sure when you're pushing it back that those stay in and don't pop out because they do want to pop out a little bit. And then you're going to just push it. All right, and I do suggest pinching it right here when you're trying to install the wings just to make sure that the fit is flush because once you do that, it lines up almost perfect. So for the rear stabilizers, it has this little tab on the bottom here. It's going to line up with that slot. And you just want to kind of wiggle it in. You don't want to really push it the first time just because the plastic might be really tight and you don't want to break it. So that one went in pretty well. Let's see how this one does. Yeah, a little more force. But once you wiggle it in, it looks pretty good. All right, lastly, we have the drop tank. And it has these little pegs to install it. You have the bottom piece is going to be a little bigger than the top. So when you're putting it in, just make sure you wiggle it a little bit too, just to make sure the parts fit good. And there you go. Looks pretty flush. And I'll show you the landing gear. You'll probably want to remove this drop tank or do the landing gear before you put the drop tank on, just because it'll be a little easier. But it has these little tabs and this little slot you want to put your fingernail in. Very carefully, because these break really easily. Kind of wiggle it, don't lift it up too much. And then once you get it up enough for the wheel to pass, you can grab that. But again, don't pull back on this too hard because this whole plastic piece can pop off. If you feel a little resistance, try to get your hand around the tire. I might even use like a flathead to 
get in there just to get the tire up a little bit. That way I'm not breaking the plastic. There we go. So that's probably what you want to do. Um, just don't, because a, a couple of pieces, not the last one I had, but a couple of other planes, these little plastic wheel covers actually popped off. So for that, you're just going to push it all the way up and it kind of locks in place. It's got little plastic tabs in there. Same thing with the other side. Again, very careful. And you can see why there's these little tabs that stick out on either side and they're, this plastic's pretty old. Uh, they don't make this model anymore. So who knows how long it's been sitting on the shelf and you just don't want to break it. That would be bad. So again, just slowly, carefully, you'll hear it pop maybe. There we go. And then it'll lock itself in place, which I think is good that they did that because sometimes landing gear collapses when you're trying to display it. And that's the last thing you want. All right, so the rear tail wheel is pretty hard to get up. Um, you're gonna grab it by the sides and lift it, but it has a little tab. I can't show you guys because it's like down in here, but it's got a little tab that when you lift this up, it actually has to pop over that to lock itself in place. And it takes a little bit of finesse and actual force to get it up. I'm not gonna do it right this second. There we go, I got it up. So it did actually work, but getting it back down is kind of the same thing. You can see that tab like right down in there at the bottom. And then when you close it, this little spot right there fits into those little slots there. So it does spin, it spins okay, not the best. Um, and then you also have, which I think is an awesome feature because this was of course a carrier aircraft, is the tail hook. So the hook itself lifts up, uh, and then that way, when it would catch the wire landing on the aircraft carrier, you can display it that way if you want, but I'm really glad that they included that as well. They actually modeled the engine details as well. Let's see if I can show you with my light there. Pretty happy with that. All right, so here it is fully assembled. I'll show you a little close up here. And the ailerons themselves do actually move. Not very much. Let's see if you can see that. And I would also be careful because they have little plastic hinges here that are prone to break. And then the flaps as well do come down. Same thing, just probably not that far. I mean, you could maybe go a little further than that, but I would just be careful if you do. And they do line up. Again, same thing with the rear stabilizers. They do bend just a little bit. Probably get them to move a little more if you want to. Maybe uh, put a little oil in there. Same thing with the rudder. It moves back and forth. It doesn't really lock in place. I'm sure you could figure something out if you wanted to, but it moves as well. And then as far as like riding goes, of course I showed you that. There's a little arrow right here, which I'm not sure if that was just for um, maybe a jack stand when they were working on it. There's a riding here that I showed you. Other than that, it's a really good model. Um, I, again, I like the detail they put. The actual props spin pretty good. These little caps can come off. This one seems like it's secured pretty well, but that's how they put the propeller on. This little cap would come off. They would put the prop on and screw it in, but it does spin pretty well both ways. And after you're done watching this video, go ahead and check out the green version I did of this model because I think the paint looks really good as well. And then here, if someone can tell me, what does this writing say right there? It's supposed to be Japanese, I believe, but it's really small. Uh, if anybody can tell me what that means, that'd be really cool. This too. All right, so as we discussed, I told you I would compare the green version to the Pearl Harbor edition as well. And you can see they're pretty much the exact same model. You can see some of the details a little more, of course, in the white version than you can of the green one. But here's a closer look at the green one. And if you want to see the review I did of this one as well, I'll show you a lot more details. I did also want to point out that the wheels themselves are made of plastic. They're not made of rubber. And they do spin... Uh, they don't spin that great, but they do, just in case you wanted to know that. All right, and I have another little surprise for you guys. This is a 132 scale pre-built model by 21st Century Toys, and it also looks really good. Not near as comparable to the Elite Force models, but if you want a 132 scale, this one looks doable. It doesn't, the ailerons don't move, and neither do the flaps, but the pilot looks pretty good. Let me see if I can move the canopy and show you. Pilot looks pretty good. Um, not near as good, of course, the Elite Force, and it does show him actually holding on to the stick. The actual cockpit is detailed. Let me zoom in. Cockpit's detailed. Um, you can see some of the dials and gauges, but of course, not going to be near as detailed just because it's so small of a model. But definitely recommend, if you're looking for 132 scale, I mean, this one definitely 
Should be something in your collection. The wheels come up and down similar to the Elite Force version I just showed y'all. You're just gonna push this little tab up, lock it in place. Same thing with that. And then of course the prop does spin and they do actually include engine detail too. And then as far as the tail goes, it does have a hook and you can see some of the sloppy paint right there. But um, the hook does come down too. So that's a little cool feature for a 132 scale. So yeah, if you're in the market for a 132 scale, this is definitely something I would look up. 21st Century Toys, 132 scale, Japanese Zero. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps out with my videos and I have a lot more content coming soon. So stay tuned. I wanna say thanks again to Incogni for sponsoring this video.